Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time three, two, you're live. And that's when Snoop Dogg goes, yeah, I got my IQ results back in. They were negative. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart were doing at Bob's Bar, but, well. you know, it was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good time. Bob's Bar. Bob's Bar. What's up, everybody? ZGP Power Hour number 158. Eight. 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 Today we are talking about engines, understanding engine dynamics. Uh, yeah. Drop your questions in the chat. We, we'll we ramble for an hour, but if you guys have anything engine-related, turbo-related, sure, we'll, we'll extend it out. <clears throat> this I wanted to... So the first thing that came to my mind when we were talking about this podcast is uh, two things. One of which, all horsepower is directly related to airflow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And fuel consumption. But the biggest thing that I want customers to maybe take away from anything I have to say today would be um, understanding how your mass airflow sensor works and your rear and your your primary bank 102 sensor works. Before we get to that, uh huh. Do we want to do featured products? We sure do. All right. We got some mounts. We got some fresh machined. Some beautiful pieces here. Uh, what I'm holding in my hand is something that I've been waiting for a long time, and I know a couple guys in the chat are, is our F35 upper trans mount. It's here. It's ready. Yeah. It's on the it's site. It's pretty. It's pretty. It is. It's cool. It's, I, it's I a like cool how piece. the guys leave the machining marks on it. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. Like A lot of people don't like that, but mm-hmm. I like the look of Yeah, I like the raw CNC machining. You can see what, parts. you know, obviously in the live stream you probably can't, but the back of the mount is cool, the top. Um, it's a yeah. shame you got to put your fuse box over top. Of it. it is. It is. You can still see it peeking down there. Um, and our old school ZZP products, we used to put them in a tumbler that, like you, it was like yeah. a big vat of yeah. let's say rocks. They're like not a, rocks. A, a media. It's, yeah. It, it, it's it's rocks. an easy way to envision this. Is like and imagine a, a big vat of rocks, and you just throw the aluminum part in it. And it just shakes the crap out of it. Yeah. It just shakes, shakes for hours. Knocks and then the it shine comes off. Yeah. It comes out and they're like all like fancy, dull. Fancy and rock tumbler, you know? Basically a rock tumbler, yeah. yes. <laughs> kind of like a sandblast. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like the, the mach- actual machine finish much mm-hmm. better than our old stuff. So yeah. And that mount also uses some of our standard inserts. So yeah, yeah. When, it's serviceable. when and if they uh you know get knocked out or if you want something softer or harder, we probably have some yeah. kicking around. Same for centerpiece as the Ecotech uh engine mount. Mm-hmm. Um uses the same diameter of bushing. Mm-hmm. Um and we actually got one in the works for the Sonic too. Hey. That's so true. uh the this this mount has actually been a problem child for us in the install department for a while because we do um run into them being very worn. So it, and it's yep. it is the weakest one on the on the cobalt. I mean, you take that, even a fresh one, you take it out, you can spin it like this. Yep. So keeping that trans in one place is, is big, which leads us to the next one. We got more transmission mounts. This is a Gen 1 Cruise a front upgraded mount. And yep. we are going to be putting this on our Yeti Cruise this week. Mm-hmm. Yes. And we're literally putting it to the test, resetting the yep. uh, Cruise World Record. Yep. Um, Yep. Not sure I what it is, but when, I was when instructed we're... to put a couple uh, one fours on kill mode next week. <laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll uh, April hopefully be taking some records. Six. Six. Yep. 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 Our local track is it's their spring opener, so we're taking a LTG car. We're taking a couple of one four cars. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe we can get Tyler to take an LTG car. We'll yeah. yeah, yeah. My slicks are uh, since I blew up my ATSB, uh, <laughs> my slicks don't need to be used. So <laughs> you might right. as well put them on your okay. Camaro and uh, run some passes. Yeah, that, yeah. that Ra- car needs a tire. So. Yeah, <laughs> Randy's yeah. Randy's probably going to be driving the Blue Turd uh, Sonic. Yep. Uh, I'm going to take Yeti Cruise. We're probably going to take one set of drag radials. Put him on Randy's car. He's going to set a record. We're going to take him off Randy's car, put him on the cruise, and then I'll set a record. And then we'll sit around while maybe Matt sets some records. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm he, kidding. We might all break. Who knows? He, but yeah. He only needs one pass. So, you know. Yeah, Matt only needs one pass. So Sometimes two. Yeah. Sometimes two. But we're gonna I'm, have... I'm pretty excited about it because um, the last time that, well, the, the Yeti's never been on the on the Never drag strip. been to the drag strip. Mm-hmm. And um, our blue Sonic was, oh, yeah. man, that thing was like fresh on a KO4. It was like, uh, it was on a Z04 for like about uh, eight hours. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. We made 244 wheel horsepower on the dyno. Didn't even have time to build a tranny file for it because <laughs> I was manually button shifting it. And I yeah. think it went 13.2 or something. Mm-hmm. 13.4. And uh, yeah, don't. 
<laughs> do that to me. 13 4. You'll go 12 9 we're now. We're mid 13. <laughs> We we're real we're real, we're real cocky about going twelve nine, but we haven't really changed anything since that thirteen four. Besides its proper trans file, which yeah. no offense, we'll probably do it. So yeah. Um, worst case, we'll have a toolkit there and just start taking weight out of it until it runs the time we need. <laughs> <laughs> but but you definitely got to go full weight first. Yeah. Like definitely do the full weight thing. Yeah, and, it's just nice to show up and know that it runs full weight. Yeah. You know, and it's uh, I put it up on the converter the other day. It gets some boost It's spicy. Going. You know, <laughs> I shouldn't say we haven't changed anything because I think our tuning has come leaps and bounds. And, mm-hmm. you know, that was like day uh, one, zero four. four. It four years ago. Yeah, we made it work and then just took it and then never followed up with that. So um, we've we've just been tuning on that thing basically ever since. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've, we've done a lot of maintenance, too. Uh, we, we haven't changed anything, but we've done a lot of maintenance. And that does make a big difference on how a yeah. car performs. So. Yeah. Yeah, certainly does. Yeah, just having everything fresh and tight. Yeah, is we, nice. I mean, we even got into the. That's the only uh, automatic transmission we've ever gotten into, too. Mm-hmm. Not oh, that's it was, right. Not because it was broke, but we just were worried and wanted to check things out and refresh some stuff while we we're in there too. So it's really dialed in right now. Still on a stock engine, um, Z04 with all the bolt-ons. It's got um, a lot of miles on it too. A yeah. lot. Yeah. The Z04 itself does. The I'm, car. The well, car. Ha- the chassis has like 140 on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that ain't bad. But yeah, that was our very first Z04 car. Um, one one note on the uh, tranny mounts and all the mounts. Um, please hear me out, you guys. When it when it when it comes to tranny mounts and engine mounts, do one at a time. Yeah. <laughs> and as soon as you achieve the amount of vibration that you can handle, <laughs> then stop. Yeah. The last thing you want to do is go from all like used mounts yeah. to like all solid mounts. Yeah. It's just you're gonna be like, "What did I do to my car?" And you're gonna be like undoing. So put one on at a time. Uh, Speedo, we are certainly looking into low pressure fuel stuff for the LTG uh, front wheel drive applications. The issue we're having right now is the Regal and the Malibu are different. Your car went way farther than we've had any Regals go. So um, just just consider yourself lucky Uh, that you've already gone that as far as you have. But, yeah, it's definitely on our radar. We don't have a Malibu. We don't have a Malibu. No. no, (laughs) So, um, you know, maybe I'll shoot you a message. Becky's got a Malibu. Yeah, Becky's car. It's got like 240,000 miles on it. His is actually the newer generation. Mm. Oh, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Hers is a 13 or 14. I don't know. We're going to have to look at both. Um, yes, Sebastian, F40 variant mm-hmm. following the F35 variant. Mm-hmm. Um, Ryan, Ryan Derrick super agreed to get his <laughs> yeah. hands on one of those. His grubby little paws on a new yeah. mod. I mean, who doesn't love them? But anyway, back to engine d- dynamics. You were about to say something, Bo. Oh, yeah. it Maybe it doesn't I'm have... I'm so excited about this, too. Yeah. it's Ooh. So it doesn't matter how good your engine is. Let's say you build the top of the line. I know you 3,800 guys love to bore and hone and blueprint and port and polish everything under the sun. <laughs> but then, like, you know, we put it together and we overlook, like, some major key factors of how this, the PCM determines how to operate this mm-hmm. engine that we just spent a lot of time on. Um, and there's two very important sensors, and it's the MAF sensor and the um, primary O2 sensor. Mm-hmm. Especially on 3800 and LSJ stuff. That's basically all they use for a lot of their fueling references. Um, so the key is we don't have any leaks between those sensors. <laughs> you know, whatever the oh, mass yeah. airflow sensor is seeing for <laughs> error, airflow is, you know, determines what kind of... Feeling, determines everything. It determines the feeling for the engine. So and the O2 sensor also is reporting back saying, yeah, we're good. So now as soon as we introduce a leak between those two, they're constantly con- counter- conflicting each other's reportings and usually just starts getting things worse because now the mass airflow adds more mm-hmm. and it's, it, you know, the, sorry, the O2 sensor command, if we had a leak in between, you know, I'm seeing all this extra airflow that is pulling in through the intake gasket or yeah. the supercharger gasket. It's just pulling in all I mean, that on meter day or so. You know, here's a good way to put it. Like, uh, so... Your math sensor should read all of the air going into the engine. Mm-hmm. There should all be of it. All of it. Yep. no air co- go- coming in anywhere else but through that in- air intake through the mass, mass airflow sensor. So let's say you do have a leak. Let's say you pull a, a vacuum line off, uh, a vacuum line breaks, cracks, uh, plastic T cracks. Mm-hmm. You, let's say you have a leak. Do not forget that, number one, there is unmetered air getting into the engine. The O2 sensor sees that 
but and the says, map has not. Sees it as the, lean. The, the O2 sensor sees it as lean, mm-hmm. and the ECM commands more fuel. Now, now that vacuum leak, when you're at full throttle, is a boost leak. Yep. Mm-hmm. So the ECM is commanding extra fuel because of this unmetered air getting in. And then when you floor it and it switches to boost, now boost is pushing out instead of sucking in. Mm-hmm. So the ECM has not only added extra fuel, there isn't even all the air that the mass airflow sensor it's saw. It's a double negative. Yeah. Making it in. I, and now you're double rich. It's double mm-hmm. negative on this whole situation. They... And it, the ECM's unfortunately not smart enough to figure out what's happening. No. Um, and y- it, you will have an extremely, extremely poor driving car, extremely mm-hmm. poor performing car, mm-hmm. bad gas mileage, with even a five to ten percent inconsistency of you know what the the mass airflow should be seeing. And this these air leaks can be anywhere after any that connection map. it can yeah. be your intake pipe you know um your fresh air inlet yep. for the pcv mm-hmm. it could be your brake booster the fitting on your brake booster it could be the coupler you forgot to tighten it could be because your you catch can dipstick which we've seen yeah. a lot lately yeah. yep <laughs> it could, like and when when i say the coupler you forgot to tighten like all of us make mistakes mm-hmm I make mistakes like like I'm a car guy from like of like 20 some years and I still like you know just yesterday I was messing with the car and I I get back to my tool bunch put my tools away and I'm like oh that's the wrench to tighten the coupler to the air in, <laughs> air intake why is it in here and not at the car yeah go out to the car I just crammed the intake on didn't tighten the clamp like, yeah you know so it's like everybody makes mistakes and yep. it's very easy to make a mistake like forgetting to tighten one couple and and when your when your tuner says find the vacuum leak yep. it doesn't yep. mean just look it doesn't mean <laughs> open the hood and look you around. can't yeah. find a vacuum hmm. leak by looking at yeah i looked at stuff it looks great and, it, and <laughs> it's not you know we're not saying this from a oh you do better standpoint it's we can't do our jobs until you do yours and make sure yeah. that everything is and sealed. Ultimately, we know how much better your results are going to be if you do find that vacuum leak mm-hmm. because the car is just going to be responsive. It's going to be accurate. It'll like, idle well. Oh, it's going to do like, everything well. Think about this also. Every, like, every engine has different situations where there's more or less vacuum. Mm-hmm. Um, a vacuum leak, when you're under like a high load situation, a vacuum leak is like... A really big leak (laughs) or if it's just an idle or if you're just cruising it's like a smaller leak like that leak is changing all the time and the in the ecm cannot predict that no yeah it's always constantly having to adjust for it after it sees it the ecm is is great at doing its job but it operates within its parameters always yeah yeah and there there's no more and no less than it can do and and we've got it pretty well off you know gm stuff being math based Mm -hmm. makes tuning particularly easier than working through an entire ve table and and we still do that anyway but uh it's air coming in air going out yeah it's it's just the big pumps pumps. big air (laughs) pumps air goes in air goes out yeah yeah yep that's that's my biggest gamut to get out of the way i guess on the dynamics and airflow stuff it's extremely important um oh and another one let's let's add this one um when you get a lean code or a rich code, that doesn't mean your car is lean or rich. Yeah. Yeah. We, be, we've made this yeah. video before, but it could be needs real to big be leak. Could be real it's set funny again. Because yeah. like you you throw that one seven one lean code yeah. and your car is actually rich as ball. <laughs> yeah. like, full it, throttle. Yeah. Or even at idle, like everything. Well, at up. idle, the car is always perfect. Yeah. Unless you have a brake booster hose yeah, yeah, size yeah, yeah. leak off. <laughs> Like the car is always perfect because the O2 is reporting to the ECM and that ECM is commanding upwards of 40, 50 percent, 60 percent of extra fuel. Yeah. The, yeah. So like it, it's that car is at stoic at idle and cruise mm-hmm. um, at full throttle. Who knows? Because there's a very few vehicles we work on are actually closed loop at full throttle. Uh-huh. 16 yeah. plus LTG LNF, LNF ahead of its time. That's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. Like even the the bad the badass ATSV, <laughs> like that is still not a wide band car. Pretty, pretty that is still crazy. a it, narrow it band O2 car. Like the little 2008 Cobalt SS GM was like, yeah, yeah, yeah this needs a wide band. <laughs> the rest, eh. four four hundred and fifty horsepower ATSV. Nah, yeah. narrow bands yeah. are fine. Other than that, um, super active switching O2s. You know, a yeah. good OE. Very good. 
uh, style, not some Amazon replacement O2 sensor is super important too because that can also um, and you know. and on the same point, math sensors. I've seen yeah. uh, like the the issue AutoZone maths oh, read maths. way different. Mm-hmm. One thing a lot of guys love to do is they have that vacuum leak. They are just throwing the parts cannon at it. They change the MAF sensor, and they still have a vacuum leak. And now they just installed a MAF sensor that's worse than the one that they had. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then they never go back to that old one because, you know, it's got a new one. Mm-hmm. Um, we're super big about OEM sensors around here. Yeah. And, um, you know, I mean, I remember when Bill Kish and I started tuning his car, and we were having O2 sensor issues. And I'm like, go to the junkyard and pull one, man. Yeah, that, like, I, I tell people that all the time. I would rather put a used 100,000-mile OEM uh-huh. MAF sensor in my vehicle than, mm-hmm. than a brand new one from any parts store that you can name. Mm-hmm. Like, even with an AC Delco name, AC Delco is not necessarily an OEM. Yeah. They're just yeah. a manufacturer. Yeah. Like, I got my little goodie box at home. It's got my O2s in yeah. it. It's got my, you know, my <laughs> my maps in yeah. it. They're all good. I have, and I have so many maps because every time I go to the junkyard, I just do little well, screws. This is going to be a yeah. nickel. Um, <laughs> um, you guys are not doing yourselves a favor by replacing the MAF sensor or O2 sensor unless your tuner says so. Yeah. yeah. Like, they basically they, like, never fail. It ha- the O2 like, does. Uh, yeah, O2 goes. Maps every are... week, there's at least a couple people a mm-hmm. week are like, oh, I'm putting a new O2 sensor, and I'm like, why? Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> this one works. Like, this one's working fine. Don't touch it. Like, uh-huh. you don't need to spend money on that. If that O2 is switching at idle and cruise, mm-hmm. I'm happy. And yeah. and that's kind of all that matters. If your tuner is happy, if Tyler, Bo, me, Matt are, are, are happy, then you're good. Yeah, if we don't mention it, it's good. Yeah, and, the, yeah. and the <laughs> leave big, it alone. Yeah. And the big thing yeah. is, you know, maybe maybe let's say it's your first time you you did put together a build, and we do have some things to check, you know. So like the first two three emails are us working out a vacuum leak. Maybe after that your fuel your fuel pressure is a little spotty. Don't feel bad if our first ten emails are just sorting the car out, yeah. because that's gonna make make the next three revisions way more effective. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's. Once, Instead once, of not fixing the problems and spending thirty revisions just chasing our tails, yeah. um, it's it's better to just like get things to square one, um, make sure the data looks good, and then we'll go from there, and we'll it'll everything will just be much smoother. Yeah, yeah. Once it, once you get everything ironed out, and you mm-hmm. get that first scan back, and the short term trims are just like this, and the mm-hmm. red lines right in the center. Feels so good. That and when we tell you there's a vacuum leak, it is not because we don't want to tune your car. <laughs> It is not because like that just gets you off of our email screen or anything like that. There's a problem. Go fix the problem. I, yeah. I, I, and then we continue. I'm speaking for myself, but I'm pretty sure I'm speaking for all of us tuners here. Like, I love tuning cars. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather build an update than t- tell you how to. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I just I want to open a scan. I want to look at the scan and be like, all right, all right, cool, cool. Yeah. How Suckers can I make this working, better? dude? Plus, Suckers plus, working. plus. Let's go. <laughs> plus, 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 plus. Good to go. Uh, Michael Bat or who said it? Somebody was asking what we were drinking. Uh, we got Old Fashions made by Big M himself. Mm-hmm. They are always great. Uh, chunky or mango? Oh, so Thousand... that's who Big M is, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Big yeah. Big M. Mike's not that big. He's <laughs> no, he's not. Skinny. He's not. But he's he's tall. Skinny. Working on that. <laughs> uh, thousand wheel, thirty eight hundred. I don't think Matt's car ever made a thousand wheel. It definitely made a thousand crank. Yeah. Because it it made what mid eight hundreds on the dyno oh, way he made, back like, in the day. Didn't he make uh, eight sixty? I'm that's, sure. Matt's I thought the in number here. was eight seventy. Yeah. It, maybe. Like uh, Matt can hope. Hopefully, Matt's listening and he can chine in. I think, but he's I, made over eight hundred. I think his like car. his fastest time is like an eight seventy, and it's made like eight seventy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that's kind of what I remember as well. That's yeah, cool. but I'm not mean, like perfectly lined up. What's but, What's know. funny, and hopefully you can chime in on this too, is like the car at like twenty two pounds sounds not as fast as at like twenty six or twenty eight pounds, let's say, but like like. It sounds sweet at the higher boost, but it runs the same times. Yep. Because Ooh. it just, it just like, Ooh. it just, the converter just eats all yeah, that power. Yeah, that 4T is just soaking like, it all it, up. 890 is over 1,000 crank. Oh, oh yeah. Well, that 1465 <laughs> yeah. has yeah. got to be gobbling up 50%. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, uh, Paul, there, there's not necessarily a pounds per minute limit 
of a math were limited in the the table in the PCM. Mm -hmm. uh, the LSJ is eleven thousand a hundred hertz. So what that means is basically just you can increase the diameter of your pipe. Mm -hmm. So, but then you lose resolution. Yeah, then you re lose resolution. So, um, realistically, like on E85 and a three-inch pipe, 400 is uh, pretty reasonable. And then we have the HPX MAF, which is great because, like Randy said, you lose resolution when mm -hmm. you start stepping up your pipe size. But that HPX just cuts everything in half, so you can make yep. way more and still have. Because I, I was actually just explaining to Erica the other day, the only downside of HP tuners and the way that our PCMs are set up is, at least in the LSJ, the jumps in between cells are fairly large. So mm -hmm. sometimes you end up in like a, you know, there's a 2700 cell and then there's a 3000 cell, but sometimes that car is in that 2800, mm -hmm. 2850 range and you're in between the two values where really it would be great if we had one more cell no, in between those in between, yeah. um but yeah so realistically uh you know on your blower car on the on the goblin we we won't have to worry about it <laughs> oh man we need to finish paul's tune i know too. like also yeah. we might paul's... be able to finish that tune in person yeah that'd be great um because we <laughs> might be uh seeing that one soon we'll see so what yeah any blower any blower lsj you're good on the stock math so yeah um, yeah. My favorite math for the 3800 is the LQ4. If you don't have an LQ4 on your 3800, what <laughs> are you get doing? One. <laughs> what are you doing? It's good for any M90 power. So uh, <laughs> I've personally never had to put an AFC on an LQ4 with a. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Zoom, 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 Zoomer's car is Zoomer's on car a... makes 400 wheel through a uh, uh, four that'd inch be intake. A good and... car to see at the track this year. Yeah. Ooh, it, we haven't heard it at the track with the equalizer on it. Uh, yeah. And I'm taking the cat back off. <laughs> <laughs> no, leave it on. It sounds so We're good. We're actually just gonna make a zoom. I don't think it's gonna go sound the bad with the cat bag off. No, I it it'll probably still sound pretty good. It's gonna sound like Matt's car. <laughs> <laughs> Real exotic for a V6. Brad, Erica didn't have much to say about that. I, <laughs> um, <laughs> I was explaining math resolution, and she's just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. "Yep, cool." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I could imagine Erica just being like. Okay. And then on to the next subject. Kyla just cuts me off when we talk about cars. Like, That's great. She's like, yeah, I just don't, don't care. care at all. And I'm like, all right, but, cool. but I need I need you to just be a wall. Yeah, just, 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 just let, let me talk, me talk at you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Katie does the same thing to me. I just talk about cars and she's like, That's nice. That's great. Yeah, thanks for sharing this with me. Oh, sorry. Um, Jesse, we're working on some things. Need some new one four mods. We we've got Got yeah, Randy's uh, Randy's car might be going together with some things. Yeah, some you things, know. some stuff. It's it, it should be. Uh, ooh, ooh, that's yeah, a hell of a pickup. D burst ATSV. Where to start a tune? Man. Tune for sure. Tune downpipes, baby. Yep. Down yeah. Oh no, tunes. kidding. That's awesome. Heck yeah. Is that Devin? Is that oh Mr. Devin, Devin right there? That is huh. awesome, sir. Come talk to me, man. Oh, oh man, yeah, that's brother. a. He had. He's got the Impala, yeah. I was pressure. I was putting the pressure on him last year to buy one, so I'm, I'm pretty excited that about that. That is my next vehicle purchase, so I'm, I'm not far behind. Box, mm. Yeah. Oh, we do. Oh, yeah, we, we do. do. It's, it's probably a little, a little outdated. outdated. It's it's a little old, but I don't know if the top five mods have actually changed probably yet. not. We haven't really made anything that like is our like, stage oh, crap, kit's a super good start. We yeah, our, our stage... stage Stage kit and a tune is really good start, and then um and then a fuel pump lobe, and then probably just an I don't know like didn't we do an aux kit on an ATSV without the fuel pump lobe? No, that's just your dreams wanting. I kind of want to try that. <laughs> I want to try an aux kit on an ATSV without the fuel pump lobe. Oh, and see he how said that works. he is not the same guy. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. It's not the so you're not but still, we're still excited. That's awesome. Thought you were still a local excited. buddy of ours. <laughs> ATSV is such a good car. Like like uh, Bo said, downpipes and a tune should be like the first yeah. mod. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna have um, big. Oh, are are y'all going to 131 for streetcar takeover? Come on, Spiel. You know we're yeah, gonna be. Come on, yeah. that's all no, we talk about every, it's, it's, every week. It's our favorite event of the year. Um, I wanted to grab Nicholas Hammond. The clutch master cylinders do fail. If yeah. you think it is your clutch master cylinder. Sit in the car and give your biggest womp with your big left foot on that clutch master cylinder. If the clutch comes back, 
then you know the clutch master cylinder has failed. They've got seals that'll go bad. Yeah, it's but, like a little diaphragm and a bore. Yep, and if you hit it hard enough, you'll get it back for yeah. one or two pumps, and then it'll go back away. So uh, try that. Hopefully it's not the throwout bearing, because the clutch master is not fun to replace, but it's a little easier than, <laughs> than pulling a trans. Yeah. That... Um, saw a couple questions about different engines. Uh, the 27 Turbo, which is in the CT5V, uh, the Silverado, the Colorado, all those, and then the LSY, which is mm-hmm. the base model 2-liter turbo engine. Um, and we haven't had any experience with them. Yep. I, the, especially the LSY. Like, uh, Yeah, they re- you know, they reduced <laughs> power output. We haven't heard of the failures like the LTG has, mm-hmm. but... Um, you know, the, the one thing that we do know is it's based on GM's new SGE class of engines, which yeah, is family of engines, yeah. which is the small gas engines. Uh, the 1.4 in the, L, the LE2 in the second gen cruise is the same architecture mm-hmm. as that LSY. So based on what we've seen <laughs> of that, I would think it'd probably be a pretty decent uh, two liter engine. But uh, the biggest hurdle is just tuning. And, mm-hmm. you know, those new Global B cars are, what is it, $1,600 to unlock through yeah, HP tuners like now? That. It's a pretty penny. Eh, yeah. Uh, why won't the ZZP intercooler pump work for the ATS-V? Hmm? The V uses a PWM-controlled pump. In- yeah. pump and... Pulse width modulated? Yep. yep. It's a uh, ZZP intercooler pump could work for your ATS-V. It's just not recommended. The... Uh... Uh, the factory pump's super good. Mm-hmm. I would imagine the factory pump is probably better since it's a brushless yeah. pump than yeah. the ZZP pump. The, the, it's the, the factory ATSV pump is pretty awesome. Um, and very rarely do they fail because that ECM is so smart that when it senses air in the system, it just shuts the pump off. So just like wild. Uh, imagine how you know, few LSJ intercooler pumps we would sell yeah, yeah. if they could do that. Because mm-hmm. yeah. that's how they'll burn, burn them on up. With the LE2 stuff. Didn't haven't we given you enough lately? <laughs> <laughs> I finally gave him a revision and he's finally running that billet one on his car. Like, he is today. Yeah. Like, yeah. Revision awesome. one went out Come like on, guy. early this week and then he finally sent me a scan today and I sent him like a second revision yeah. scan back and so I'll, we're I'll have good. you know Preston Tim did not send you that I sent you that <laughs> oh, yeah. he definitely sent that to you because Preston emailed me and he's like uh, hey, hey I got thanks. a wastegate thanks and I was like oh Tim was right. like Randy what happened and I was like oh I sent I sent a thing to try on yeah, the I, I, yeah. <laughs> oh. I mean what I'm more excited about with Preston is he's buying my old sky yeah I am so excited about that. Like, I overbuild cars so much, <laughs> and I'm always so disgusted with all my friends for not buying my damn cars. <laughs> and this Kappa is such an overbuilt car, and finally, like, somebody I like is going to own it. I'm, I'm so freaking excited. Yeah, and He's just he... waiting for uh, Kelly, the guy that bought it for me, Pull to get it out of storage. It's just like behind and stuck in storage. And since, to we, where... since we saw, since, since we have Preston here, Probably drive it around on that extrude honed K04 first. Yeah, well, yeah, that, I, that's what he's planning okay. on doing. I okay. say, don't just slap your Z54 on there all willy nilly. It's a, it's a good setup. So. And Preston, uh, we have another product that's going to be hit on the website yeah. next oh, week yeah. that um, you're going to need for that sky. <laughs> <laughs> the whole reason I sold the sky was because I couldn't keep a rear end in it with yeah. my foot. So, um, yeah, you're going to want. A reinforced rear axle mount that yeah. we are going to be releasing here in the very, very near future. Mm-hmm. It's beefy. It's 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 pretty cool. It's pretty what cool is beef. so? We are getting way far Sorry, off from engines. Way but, off engines. Oh, yeah. uh, um, last thing. Boys. Oh my goodness, four thirty. Uh, <laughs> but the one thing I want to say: How weird for GM to use the CTS V1 diff, or is it the V2? It's a V2 diff. They all slash slowed. like yeah. STS and yeah, like, yeah. yeah but like they all d- disintegrate. End. Um, but back to engines. Um, I, I mentioned it earlier. The LE2 has been a, a nice, surprising breath of fresh air of yeah. a good engine again. Because yeah. we've been working on the LTGs for so long, and in recipe form, they should be ph- a phenomenal package. But yeah. they're just not as reliable as we would like. Uh, and then we get into the LE2, which is you know a little 1.4 liter, mm-hmm. and 
It's been great. Haven't ran out of injectors. Haven't ran yeah. out of fuel pump. Haven't, like, it's really one of those break, breakthrough platforms from us. It's like, oh, yeah. you're going to make this easy on us. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the ATS <laughs> we ran us through the ringer. Like, yeah. That engine is like, we're pulling them apart weekly and trying different, different like, things. Vastly yeah. different things mm-hmm. to try to figure out why the LTG blows up so much. And like you know, we figured out a few things, a few things. Yeah. Not just one thing. Like we yep. figured out a few things that make them way better, but we still haven't solved it. The key. But we haven't put the key in the door and just unlocked it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we haven't found that one thing that's like. I'm super magical. excited about a project we're working on this week. <laughs> because I think that's going to do some good things for uh, stock engine operation too. Excellent. True. Which is where we're at. We want we want these uh, LTGs to operate closer to how an LNF does in stock mm-hmm. stock form. You know, we don't want to have to forge everything just to yeah. just to make three hundred wheel horse. I mean, as much as we like building engines and doing cool stuff, like we don't want to have to. Do that we every we don't. Time yeah, we don't want. Wheel, like. <laughs> it's so nice to be able to tell a customer. Yeah, especially in LSJ, like, oh yeah, just buy the turbo kit, throw it on. Your engine's on. good. <laughs> yeah. And LTG cars, it's like, and well... In, in retrospect, we might we might have been a little spoiled with the yeah, LSJs and sure. the LNFs. Like, oh, just toss yeah. us and on. The 3, and the 3800, like, same thing. Yeah, like, Man, that freaking LNF. Like, I, 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 I think that's probably the best engineered engine I've ever been involved with. Pro- yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and the LNF engine, incredible. like, I, yeah. what do you... What are you going to complain about? Okay, they have porous blocks sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes they have a porous block. But like every car, every engine has some huge problem with mm-hmm. it. And like in the blocks, you know, they, they fixed it. You know, they yep. got the, the Gen 3 block mm-hmm. from the, you know, in the Regals. Mm-hmm. You just like swap blocks to that one and then you're good to go. It is well, crazy how great that engine is and how limited of production it really was. Yeah. yeah. And how early it was. I mean, 2008, it was, or 2007 in the Kappas, mm-hmm. was GM's yeah. first foray they, into direct injection. They literally injection. closed the 3800 book. <laughs> they yeah. did. Opened up with that, which was a perfect, you know, predecessor. And then they're like, uh, well, it's 2012, 13. We, we don't Yeah, get this. rid of it. Yeah, we don't <laughs> need it. Yeah. And, and we only put it in like two cars through those years. Three cars. Yeah. yeah. Three, uh, yeah. We, including the Regal. Yeah. And well, the, yeah, yeah, the, the Regal, so four. Um, but it, and the way that that engine operates and works, you, you look at it from a number standpoint, the head flow is terrible. Yeah. It's got a small, like on paper, you're like, this has got to be terrible, right? I mean, it, as far as engine dynamics goes, the LNF wins all the categories. A- absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. perfect example, Sarah, my girlfriend drives a 5.3 liter <laughs> cammed E85 full bolt on Grand Prix. Mm-hmm. And then she gets in her stock HHRSS <laughs> with a tune, and she's like, "This thing fast." This yeah. Thing really <laughs> but, I'm like, "You're dang right, it does," because yeah. <laughs> it is like it's it's wild. And they get great gas mileage. Yeah, mm-hmm. we were just talking yeah. on lunch. I uh, yeah, her average. You, I get in that car and you click over to the average. It's like twenty eight five. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's <laughs> in a brick. In a brick with an auto yeah. transmission. In 220,000 miles. Yeah. Like it's not a, it's not like it's a new crispy engine either. <laughs> it's it's so frustrating because the LNF engine, like if you just put a tune on it, it's like 300 wheel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like and it gets over 30 miles a gallon in a Cobalt. Yeah. Like that's Crazy. ridiculous. My LTG Regal Gets like <laughs> low, <laughs> super low twenties on gas. Let's be real, it's teens, bro. Being super, it's teens, super, bro. super nice. It's so like, teens. It's pretty much teens. Like, I'm, and I've heard people say that, like, oh yeah, they went from the LNF and the LHU to the LTG because of emissions reasons. It's not better. It's no, not. it's not better. Nope. Maybe it, I, like you guys. Like, imagine this. Okay, you got a Regal GS. <laughs> Regal GS with the LTG, and you put a tune on it. And then you got a Cobalt SS with just a tune on it. Yeah. What car do you think is going to win? The Cobalt. Cobalt. <laughs> by, by like three bus lengths. By bus lengths. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not car lengths, bus yeah. lengths. Yeah, it, it's, it's like, incredible. <laughs> it's freaking it's, Cobalt. It's like an LNF Cobalt. It's like one of the... I, I would like to... You know what? I want to compare an LNF Cobalt to that 
dang Mercedes. Um, oh, the, uh, the E43 AMG. Yeah, the CLA guy. 43 yep. AMG. Like, that's what, 300 and something horse, four cylinder, two yeah, liter? Yeah, 340 or something like, like that. Like, I'm curious if the CLA, like, if it gains very much with the tune. Yeah. Like, they might have it, they might already have it turned up because, you know, from what I hear, you know, rumors is that they turn the, they, tuned the cobalt ss down because it was like kicking the corvette's ass yeah mm-hmm. yeah so, so i don't want to interrupt you i hear ah. speedo saying he's getting 29 to 30 in his malibu which is very interesting because i was just talking to a customer the other day he has two ltgs and he has an ats and he has a malibu okay he we're building up the ats and he's he's worried about he's he's worried about gas mileage and <laughs> Wants 400 horsepower. I'm like, uh, I'm like <laughs> but yeah. you know, you know, we're just we're talking, and he's like, well, my my Malibu gets, I I get like 30, and I'm like, mm, have you do hand, the math? Have you hand calculated it? Yeah. And he goes, I have, and so it's interesting to hear Speedo say the same thing. Hmm. I wonder if there's some crazy gearing in that oh, transmission, yeah, or, or that hmm. that. Um, newer style Malibu is just like super aerodynamic. Yeah, better drag the coefficient. Uh, ATSs and the CTSs have different gear ratios. There's at least three different gear ratios between those two cars. Yep. Those are the rear wheel drive platform, and then the uh, front wheel drive and all wheel drives have at least three different gear ratios. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I was we just could, looking could... at uh, Mr. Malakad's file, and he's got some weird gear ratio in that that I haven't seen yet. So huh. I thought that was interesting. Um, but yeah, so there's there's many different gear ratios. It's very possible we'd have, that the we'd, Malibu has a tall gear final drive in it. Yeah, that yeah. we should check. Uh, we should check your gear ratio compared to a Malibu gear ratio. I mean, mine's like a three forty six or something like that. Like it's all wheel drive Regal, which I mean, it's a over a four thousand pound car if I recall. You know so. what? And his car is a front wheel. The Malibus are front wheel drive too. So yeah, well, front wheel drive there. is going to have a taller gear because it's two wheel drive than like an all wheel drive car. Yeah. So. Um, hmm. anyway. the, the, the weak spot on the LTG, the, the factory ring gap is tight. It's, I mean, but in comparison to new engines in other platforms, it's not that much tighter. No. Uh, but in stock form, the, the ring lands breaking is the biggest issue. I yeah. mean, you can, you can run it on come and go 87 or shell 93 and they still break. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was a factory recall for the LTGs to uh, where you'd go in the GM and they'd install a colder spark plug. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. if that tells you anything about the uh, eng- engine having detonation issues, then, I mean, if the manufacturer has a recall for a colder spark plug, good. I mean, here's, here's my gripe with like the LTG. It was like a little Band-Aid put in there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> my, my gripe with the LTG. Get you through your warranty on those plugs. <laughs> I'll jump in a car. Bo, Bo will be like, "Here, here's a stage one kid on a ATS, let's say. Mm-hmm. Um, here, go tune it. So I jump in it, and I'll you know, put a standard 1.0 file on it, which is a pretty low boost, pretty low timing, uh, a file meant to turn it up after driving. Mm-hmm. And um, I'll drive it, and occasionally I'll have a car that spark knocks audibly, yeah. but has zero KR showing in the scan. Yeah, yeah. Like how like how do you remote tune a vehicle that has a, a huge issue like that? Is it a uh, you know is it a knock sensor issue? Is it a, a an ECM to knock sensor issue? Like is it the way is that it calculates KR? It, yeah, there there's a lot of different factors that go into it, and you know one thing as well is because of those emission things that GM has to hit the different targets, they they lug them around. I mean, yeah. the auto cars will be in sixth gear or eighth gear if you're if you have an A8 car doing 45 down 28th Street. Yep. Which, so you're and as soon as you're in eighth or sixth or whatever it might be, and you get on it a little bit, you increase the boost, increase the cylinder pressure, but you've got, you know, uh, it's yeah. There's a lot of things that go into it, um, and Zoom has taken a particular interest into the LTG, really nailing down what it could be because uh, again on paper gm got it so right with the lnf and we can push that engine so far and make great power and good gas mileage and realistically you tear it apart and it's not that different i mean they they switched the head around 
Um, you know, the oil pumps driven differently. The balance shafts are different, but at the end of the day, it's an aluminum four cylinder with the turbo on it. And so we're trying everything. Um, and like Bo said, making incremental gains here and there. Um, but we just haven't unlocked the secret yet. You know Mm -hmm. what, what, what that is. So, yeah, I mean, we'll, we literally will have an LNF engine apart on a bench next to an an LTG next to an LTG and be like, huh, well, that's different. Let's just do that to the LTG Mm -hmm. and then we'll put it together and it, and it's either negative gains or doesn't do what we want it to do. And we've done that multiple times and it's Mm -hmm. just like, man, like this is, this is not easy trying to figure this stuff out. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something, (laughs) you know, um, like I, I think I referenced last weekend, our success is related to bouncing from one failure to another failure without lack of enthusiasm. Yeah. But it's really hard on that day thing. Because <laughs> uh, when that, our, you know, like Randy said, we had it really easy before. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing, too. I, if we're talking about engine and engine dynamics, talk about the hard wrap that the 1.4 gets. It's yeah. A, and it's a killer engine. Like, yeah. Every... It, it leaks a little coolant here and there. So. Yeah. The, the folks that haven't been following along, I drove my green car with a pretty <laughs> pretty messed up ring land from here to North Carolina. Ripped beat, around the drive. Beat on it pretty well. Basically we on there. accident. Basically on accident. Broke yeah. it the day before, maybe. Yeah. Didn't know it. <laughs> maybe. And then beat on it all weekend. Like, oh, if it breaks, it breaks. I'll leave it here and I'll figure it out later. And drove it all the way back to Michigan. Yep. And it broke on 28th. And my biggest gripe... You know, there's there's not a lot of things that get me really riled up on the internet anymore. <laughs> but especially, uh, somebody mentioned it earlier, that VinWiki uh, yeah. video that got posted. Somebody in the comments was like, oh, they're talking about the 1.4 that's in the cruise. That's the worst engine that GM's ever made. And yeah, 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 I get Listen. it. Okay. GM bolted some cheap plastic to yeah, it. Yeah, like you yeah. replaced yeah. three parts. From a mechanic standpoint, it might be one of the best engines they've like, ever made. Right? I I, I I agree. If you actually know how to turn a ten millimeter wrench, <laughs> it's yeah. it's a great engine. Yeah. Like there is very little fail points related to that engine, and they're all stuff that you can do in the afternoon in your yeah. garage. Yeah. Like aiming like, systems for, easy. Yeah. Like the whole there's no balance shafts. It's just it's an engine in its simplest form. Yeah. yeah. Well, and not to mention in the cruise, there's like a mile around the whole dang thing to <laughs> yeah, do yeah. anything you want. Yeah, because so. they should have put a two liter. It, it in really there, but... is frustrating though. Like everybody's like, "Oh, the one four is terrible," and it's like, "No, it's not." No. Like, you revise a few components and like replace your radiator hoses at a <laughs> a recommended increment of mm-hmm. like a hundred thousand miles, let's say, yeah. and you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's. I tune them weekly on 87 octane, like, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> above stock performance on 87 still. Like, I mean, it's it's a great engine. Like, it's literally replace your thermostat housing. Yeah. The water replace outlet. Your the water outlet. Neck, and the... Replace your coolant reservoir. Yep. And Turbo. radiator hoses. Yeah. Do your radiator hoses Done. every 100,000 miles. Yes. And the, yep. and the turbo, like, which if you're buying a mod car, you want a bigger turbo anyway. Yeah. yeah. So like, get rid of that which junk is, Which one. is a great selling point for the 1.4 because I bought that's how I bought my Buick. My Buick yeah. had a 0299 at the dealership, and they were like, ah, oh, we can't fix it. It's going to yep. need a new turbo. And I was like, guess who's putting a new turbo on that anyway? <laughs> um, I'm going to take, you know, 2500 bucks off your uh, price. Yeah. And, and, the car. and I mean, still to this day, our drag car on the dyno has made nearly 600. On the track has made way more than 600 (laughs) it's a stock block rods pistons valve springs head studs camps yep and And a big turbo and a turbo yeah what what more can you ask for stuff yeah what 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 do you want from the 1.4 liter dude like (laughs) yeah and i've rambled about it before and i'll continue to ramble about it but taking a 1.4 from a 17 second quarter mile down to 12 dropping five seconds off your quarter mile with a z04 and some weight reduction what what else can you do that in it's pretty crazy that thing runs 17 (laughs) seconds in stock (laughs) yeah they're so slow they are painfully slow yeah Um, but but anyway sorry that was my one four soapbox for no i mean it's it's great i mean the uh right now we're working a i don't know understand 
why but we are just so invested in valve train lately i mean i do understand why it's it's a major key component to engine dynamics but like we are just in the 3800 valve train we're working everything we're 20 years deep on this platform and we have new everything coming out for the 3800 Mm -hmm. valve train same for the one four you know we are just tinkering on one four valve train we've done one four valve train testing in a couple of different cars and we're literally redoing it and going through the paces again um just next week like we've been one four valve train testing all year yeah and stuff that <clears throat> hasn't made it to your guys's hands yet but is going to be super cool and um you know thanks to tim for pushing the limits on that <laughs> <laughs> and tyler and the drag sonic but <laughs> it's uh it's it's super cool to uh tinker on the valve trains in these engines because there's uh, super cool little room for improvements and mods that we can add. The tensioner upgrades that we've uh, been yeah. doing in all the platforms has mm-hmm. been absolutely incredible. Uh, the material that we're using has added so much longevity. It's freaking magical. It's added... oil impregnated plastic that never <laughs> seems to wear out. Like it, yeah, it that green never. stuff. Like you just pull that we it sell, out and it has it's... zero wear. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is amazing. It's so strong. It. Yeah. I mean, I think it's never gonna break in half like an ecotech timing chain mm-hmm. guy well it does. was yeah. interesting because when my when i first started working here it was very common to have an ecotech timing chain failure yeah yeah we had them in all the time all the time yeah. and you know i hate to say it, even if it was a newer engine if the guys were pushing it mm-hmm. we we might break a guide yeah and you know you get a timing code it comes in man that front guide's broke again it yep. broke the bolt right <laughs> off you know yeah yep. so we've upgraded that bolt and that guide, and I kid you not, we have not had a single Egotech timing failure since. No. Mm-hmm. And then, like, we pull our stuff apart after 10,000 miles, and it still has machine marks in it. And now, you know, the stuff's been working so good, we're implementing it into all the other applications we can. It's super exciting to see. And what I really like on on the 1.4 valve train testing is, you know, we got into the, the 1.4 quite a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And then we made all our progress with the Z04 and the Drag Sonic, and we found a bunch of failures. It, but at the beginning, it was an engine where it was like, oh, okay, um, you know, this isn't going to make a bunch of power. Like, we're, we're going to make the mods, but nobody's really going to love it. Mm-hmm. And now we see the community, I mean, eaten up everything. And yeah, these engines uh, are great. The 1.4 boys, we're coming up on the 3800 boys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when it's going to happen. When you look at our metrics. But it's going to yeah. happen. That, that is a very, it's a car that has a, it's very moddable. Yeah. And and we're now at a point where we're like, okay, well, we started our we're, valve train six, eight years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's relook at it. Yeah. We're at a point where we are double where we were at before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We need to go through it again. And like uh, Tim and I go back and forth on a weekly basis about drive or sorry, uh, valve train stuff on yeah. the one four. Yeah. Like we're in contacts with uh, you know, a couple big players in the game just trying to figure out what more we can get. Yeah, out I, of it before. I can't even hate on the fact that the 1.4s are starting to dominate over the 3800s yeah. because you know what's crazy? The 1.4s are at the same price point these days. Yeah. If you want a good 3800, <laughs> you're going to spend as much as on a 1.4, so I can't knock you guys yep. for getting it. And they come in a manual. And, and they, a hatchback. Manual. Yeah. And, the, and to be honest, the aftermarket is just as fun and affordable. Yeah. And the uh, technology is updated. Like the, oh, the it's car. Overall, it's a, way nicer car. It's a better yeah. chassis. <laughs> I mean, you can't argue with that. It's a better <laughs> chassis. I mean, it comes with a pretty good just sounding easy radio. To work on. <laughs> um, it's, you know, Bluetooth. I mean, the technology of the yeah. car, like, it, it's, it's, it's a great car. But in a way, sorry. No, go for it. Uh, in a way, the 1 4 is kind of like. A four-cylinder 3800. Iron block. Iron block. (laughs) It's simple. Yep. Like I said, no balance shafts. Like it's just, adorable. yeah, it's just yeah. this big. Ian, instead Ian of this gave big. you this perfect little gem, but had it all choked up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, and then we just like perfect. Yeah. I'll take you, and I'm gonna make uh, you my little baby. I, I'm putting together my engine right now. I put those pistons in the other day. Gosh, are they adorable? <laughs> they are so. Cute. It's, I know. They are this big around. They're that big around. And a half millimeters. They're literally of this big around. Four hundred plus horsepower <laughs> this year. Uh, oh my gosh it's uh and that being said i am looking for a 3800 um but I, i'm trying to get my grandma's pau that's what i really want Oof, uh, that's everybody man yeah uh, everybody's a, trying to get I need, grandma's, I need PAU. grandma's pau uh but we'll, we'll see yeah we'll see what happens uh okay. chunky or mango <laughs> for some reason the one for at least in a sonic is much less torque steer prone 
than a cobalt yeah. to me. Yeah. I, especially if you have an LSD in that thing, mm-hmm. they are straight yeah. as an arrow. Even yeah. the auto doesn't dance at all. No. Yeah. It usually just spins real hard into the rev limiter in one two. <laughs> Tim knows what he's doing though, so it goes through that just fine. And uh, after that, it's clear. Yeah, <laughs> it's just moving out. And I saw maybe Matt uh, Captain Slow asked about the Auto Sonics. I've been driving the turd lately. It's good. It's good. It's yeah. good. And uh, it's convenient. Yeti, Yeti's even better. Convenient. Yeah. yeah the, I, need, the, I need to look at the trans file on Yeti. The auto definitely good. has a lot more parasitic loss than mm-hmm. the manuals. Yeah, but like there is something to just putting it in drive and just hitting the gas pedal or the brake like yeah. that. That's pretty nice. Like I can't knock the auto. Matt, um, Matt I, Mikoff, my grandmother is a saint. <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy Mantooth is a saint. She is a saint, and I will take the valve stem cores out of your truck before I leave. You. <laughs> uh, Jeff McGovern, yes, this right here <clears throat> is a solid front transmission solid front mount. Transmount. For your cruise, I didn't see his. Pro- I didn't see his comment. He has an auto. <laughs> yeah, he's got an auto. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah buddy. This is your competition for Yeti. This is. is this is this could be yours, brother. But I'm unfortunately going to bolt it to our cruise and beat your time next week. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. And then we we'll gave, sell you one, and then you can beat it we again. We did. We did give you an entire year. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Tim. Tim backed me off last year. Said, "Hey, <laughs> let, 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 let's 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 see what happens." Yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, we're coming it's, for it. Twelve nine is impressive, though. <laughs> Super shouts to you. Yeah, we hate on you. It's only because we love you, buddy. Um, it's it's fun to have some rivalry there. And yeah. honestly, twelve nine in a cruise that runs seventeen seconds stock is That's a killer impressive. feat. Yep. Shouts to you for putting together a good car and always working well with Tim. So uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it'll be in your mailbox <laughs> next week, <laughs> but. <clears throat> In in theory, these these are ready ready to go. Besides uh, bolting it on our car, figuring out hardware some stuff, some yeah. hardware. Yeah, um, I, I mentioned or I saw somebody grab on it earlier. You know, talking about LTGs, we don't dislike LTGs in any capacity. I'm yeah, gonna, and I I'm glad you're circling back to that. I I got in the Camaro last night, which is Z57 aux kit E85. You know, full exhaust, all ever literally everything we make. And that car is so much fun. Yeah. It is a gigantic monstrosity. <laughs> that Camaro is so huge, and you're so small in the cabin. But getting in it, and then I, I didn't take the highway home. I took uh, that road over by Johnson Park, which has some nice little curves in it. And all the turbo noises were right, and the exhaust is good. Mm-hmm. And, like, great. it's it's a great engine that can make some really good power. I mean, yeah. we've made over 650 on Alan Mayo's Camaro. Like, it's you, not... You know, it's it gets a bad rep, but it's just an engine that requires a lot of detail and um, some respect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. You, it's not an engine that you're going to be able to abuse and then keep coming back, and it's not going to keep coming back asking for more. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's it gets a bad rep, too, because it's, I think, the community... Um, a lot of young kids might be getting into it for one of their first cars, so mm-hmm. they don't know a lot about modding, and they don't know a lot about cars in general, maybe, which is okay. Yeah. Um, that's We all started somewhere, literally. Yep. And um, it's just, it they they might have it not on the best fuel. Um, you know, it's, it's an engine where if Tim buys one, you know, we talk about this a lot, if Tim buys one, which he has, um, and he puts his tune on it, and he puts his good fuel in it, and he puts all of the mods on it, he doesn't have an issue. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the wrong hands, it can be a problem. So you kind of got to treat it with some respect. And It's definitely you, and, not a car you can buy and like remove the top speed limiter and go do <laughs> yeah, three top speed Yeah, limiter. and you know, a 3800 can, and we've, yeah. back to Randy's thing, we've been blessed in the past. Yeah, but, yeah. And, you know, we're just currently not. And it doesn't mean that it's not a good engine. It doesn't mean that we're not building good ones every day Mm -hmm. and that we're not making horsepower with them every day. It's just, you know, we know that you guys get yourself into these situations. We're just trying to prevent that effectively because if if you're happy with your car, we're, you know, you're happy with buying parts from us and, you know, the relationship continues. So, yeah, um, it's if I had any recommendation to anybody that was buying an LTG is just pick it up. Change the oil, put some Mobile One ESP in it, put some Denso Iridiums in it, make sure you got the best of the best fuel in it. And, it's and then okay. email us. <laughs> email <laughs> and, us. And yeah. figure out what you need go to do. Go from there. It's all right to floor the dang thing, 
but don't do it with four four dudes in the car expecting it to do 140 miles an hour because it has a turbo it's not going to want to do that yeah. it is not it it literally might not ever <laughs> do that yeah. because it's a four thousand pound car and it's yeah it's not in the camaro not in the camaro yeah, the ats the camaro. again yeah but not um, not four dudes you know with legs, i, I <laughs> i'm guilty Dan in the back. i'm guilty so i remember when my cruise was pretty new back in the day and i kid you not the first thing we did was you know hop in it and go for a top speed bo run. was in college hey look at this car man it's got a turbo you bet slam the hood put four dudes in it let's see what the top speed limiter is it's 114 miles an hour yeah. it took us so oh. long to get there <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably like so or, you do that in your ltg days, yeah. and then you got to email me and the the engine the forge engine's like you know seven thousand dollars <laughs> That's yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. So treat it with some respect. It'll treat you. It'll return the favor. Um, yeah. I'd... It's not a bad engine by any means. We yeah. see a lot of good cars every day. We tune a lot of good cars every day. Um, and and one great thing that GM paired behind that LTG is some good transmissions. Like killer the, transmissions. The killer all-wheel drive great. system. Yeah. You know, Tim Tim and I had, were bantering a little bit today. I sent up killer LTG. 40,000 mile car, all wheel drive coupe. <laughs> Tim's like, oh, that's V money. It is V money, but yeah. it's yeah. all wheel drive. You can drive it every day to work. Yeah. And anymore, that car will run 11 fives with parts off the shelf. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can drive an ATSV every day to work. <laughs> yeah. But do you? Tim. But, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you bought an LTG all-wheel drive car to do that every day. <laughs> oh, weird, weird, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Weird. Oh, well, that backfired. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't expect that. You could have, you could have one car that does both. <laughs> but that would just wouldn't be car guy and that wouldn't no. be car guy. You get definitely no. gotta have two. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's it's um I love I love my Regal GS. Love my LTG Regal GS. It is a great car, but it is mm-hmm. not a car that I'm gonna be like, all right, let's make four hundred wheels. So it's, yeah. It's a transverse tranny, all wheel drive, sideways engine, like the engine has a parasitic loss of like a hundred percent. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So, uh, so it is not a car to go super fast with. Um, it's zero to sixty really quick, and then after that, the ATSs are like, uh, see, Bye. see you later. Bye. Right. So Rear like, drive. I yeah. come from the Regal setup. One of the best parts about the Regal, <clears throat> obviously, is it does things it's not supposed to do. Mm-hmm. That's that's what the Moose has going for it. Um, and so, like, there's been so much, like, literally the doubt you guys are putting in the LTG and its capabilities has, like, sparked this little interest in the back of my head lately um, to build an ATS that does do the things that nobody thinks it can do. Yeah. Because, in theory, it's an incredible platform. Oh, the I, 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 is amazing. The, oh, chassis the chassis is pretty good. Oh, oh, the all-wheel drive system impresses me every time I drive one. Um, the seating position, the cockpit, and everything is dialed. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it touches my soft point because it's like this weird generation of GM where they came out of the shitbox era <laughs> and were transitioning into building really nice cars, yeah. but like it's yeah, not yeah. overdone. Yeah. And then at the same time, they're affordable and they're small ish you know it's it's a cool car um there's just you know there's just not guys out there doing them right and they're just like there's not a lot of 3800 guys out there doing them right Mm -hmm. well (laughs) yeah you know i'm sure there's 90 percent of the people building these cars that we sell parts to that are not on the social medias that we see yeah um but there there are still the select few that do like we just i talked about him last week robert thomas he has two ats's his his daughters, mm-hmm. they're both all-wheel drive, I think. Yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah, both all-wheel drive run... His is like 11.3 on a Forge Long Block and a Z57. Yeah. All-wheel drive. Cuts 71, like, 63. Yeah, yeah. Z57. Actually, we went back and forth. He didn't know. We were checking some stuff out. Nobody knows? I can't remember anymore. <laughs> it's one of the big but ones. But 11.3. <laughs> all-wheel drive, yeah. like one, what, four... 560 foot uh, it's not that quick that's v but yeah so that car we built that car probably shoot a long time ago oh it was when i started yeah years ago. probably five years ago 
And uh, it's still rocking. Still he's, he's done a lot of work. Not to knock Thomas's work or Robert Robert's work and yeah. all those stuff he's done to it. Um, but he does drag week and like so. Uh, to get back to the LTG is unreliable. It's really not that bad. Yeah, it's really not. I mean, we have so m- the Camaro's been he, together for years. You, like you know what? ZZP's never blown up an LTG mm, until today at five oh nine. Because you just said maybe was... like maybe like years ago maybe like years ago but since I've been here we have not blown up an LTG that's been in our house I mean our we, we our we, like we... Ryan's ATS before mm-hmm. it was Ryan's ATS was making over four hundred wheel and On never heard engine. an yeah. engine. Well, and literally this week, we just installed a stock one in one of our cars on purpose for testing. Yeah. And we'll see how that pans out. That was a junkyard engine on a pallet sideways with a cracked manifold that <laughs> we, you know, turned up right. And <laughs> yeah, and so far it has all four pistons. So far. <laughs> I'm taking it home this weekend. We'll see about that. But like, seriously, you know. Oh, it you're just, taking the ATS? No one wants to take the ATS. If you need to. Somebody <laughs> oh, as long as somebody drives it. <laughs> <laughs> but but same thing with the Camaro, like multiple multiple track days, mm-hmm. you know, quarter mile auto. Yeah. That thing's done everything. Yeah, and it's you know what? never missed a beat. It's um, great. One thing that people might be curious on, and I I would definitely like to squeeze in here is like, um, all right, so you have the the Malibu and Regal. That is a transverse sideways sitting engine um, LTG car. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely the least potential for go fast in a straight line or or highway racing the car. Yeah. Uh, the longitudinal like you know rear drive base ATS and Camaro is a way better platform for making like quarter mile power and um, like highway racing power. Um, I. Still, even me knowing that, I have my ATS V for my racy stuff. I wanted the Regal. Yeah. I like the Regal body style. Mm-hmm. I like the Regal seats. Like, I yeah. love yeah. the yeah. Regal. I like that it's all wheel drive, even though I don't really need it because I have snow tires anyway. But, like, I like the all wheel drive. Um, I feel, yeah, I, I think the, it's arguable what is a nicer car, the Buick Regal or the ATS. I love Regals. The the um, infotainment, uh, you know, side is pretty much the same. Um, the radio quality is pretty much the same. The ATS mm-hmm, yeah. with the premium sound might be slightly better than the Regal, maybe. Yep. I'd, um, but I like, think they're super comparable too. But like, if you want to go fast in on a road course, Camaro hands oh, down. Yeah. Yeah. You got the wide fenders, Big wide tires, quarter panels. Yeah. You can fit any wheel and tire you mm-hmm. pretty much want to run. And then you have the four cylinder aluminum engine, so it's like nice and light. Yep. yep. Um the the ATS would be a like an like a rear wheel drive ATS would be a great drag car, let's say, or highway racer. Um if you wanted a car to like stop light mm-hmm. race. Mm-hmm. An all-wheel drive, all-wheel drive ATS, ATS yeah. I would say, would be the car to have. Um, then you 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 still have pretty low parasitics, but you still have that rear drive, you know, pretty Oof, good. Yeah, yeah. Pretty I pretty would, low parasitic setup. I would love to take a all-wheel drive ATS streetcar takeover and run the 12O class. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that thing would literally Just you could bang, tune bang, it to bang. run a 12O every pass. Mm-hmm. If you had a rear drive one and you want to run like a 12O, you're gonna have to put slicks on it. Yeah, yep. you're gonna have to. On an all-wheel drive car, probably not. Probably a set of 200 treadwares or a set of Michelin 4Ss, maybe. Yeah. You might be able to run like 11s with that. Yep. Um, but uh, but like a Regal, that's that's gonna be tough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That first and second gear is fast, but when you get into third, you're like, man, like mm. this thing's this is, heavy. Yeah. This this it's yeah. not even the heaviness. It's just that darn transmission. There's something in the transmission. Yeah. I mean, well, also the Regal is like Ryan said. 3,800, 4,000 pounds. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, than I, I would ATS. argue that between... That's that regal life. Mine weighs the same. They haven't changed it in 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, between the Cadillac and the Buick, I think they are both very similar, but maybe the Buick is slightly more refined. I'd buy like... the Buick for the girlfriend. I'd buy the Cadillac for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Speedo Jameson. Yeah. The LTG Camaro driven by John Ward. I, I've talked to him a couple times. The dude's great. He's super... Super nice, has fielded all my questions. But, yeah, he went on to win, I think, the SCCA uh, solo Nats in a basically stock LTG Camaro. Killer. Like, yeah, that's he, cool. you know, tires and obviously all, all that. But, um, 
great engine, great car, great platform. Uh, it I know is. we're around it every day, and they grow on me more and more. I I'm at the point where I'd almost rather have an LTG than an ATSV. I don't know what's gotten into me. <laughs> Besides the noises they make, yeah, you, yeah, you cannot beat that Whoa, V exhaust. That yeah, yeah, oh, yeah that's, it's it's oh. it's phenomenal. It's so good. <laughs> oh my gosh, it just does the best noises. I know, I know. Yeah. All right, so makes real good noise. Randy's got to go. We're yep. past five. We uh, we'll go around real quick. What are you guys doing this weekend? Tim, Tim start Easter. I got some bowling. It's Easter? Got some family coming over. <laughs> bowling. Bowling, yep. Bowling and family stuff. You. Hey, there you yeah, go. I'm going to go play a concert tonight, and then tomorrow I'm going to work on the carcass of Green Car. Um, try to get some stuff tidied so I can get it in the shop. And nice. Get an engine and the thing and do some stuff. Make some yes, noise. that's about it. All right. <laughs> uh, nothing planned, which is fantastic. Uh, Eric I don't is believe good. you. <laughs> Eric is going out tomorrow uh, with which, her friends, which means I'm going to poke around in the garage all afternoon and probably drink Tyler's too many highlights. So uh, that'll be great. <laughs> what about you, Bo? Sinful, I sent you an update today. Um, I am uh, East. I'm full Easter duty. Got both sides of the family out there working for Jesus. <laughs> yep. Going on, collecting eggs. I full <laughs> Easter duty. I'm going to be hiding so many eggs. <laughs> I've got <laughs> eggs hidden in my house already for Sunday. Yeah, nice. Like I have to look at all these eggs all over the place, nice. and I'm like, oh, there's one. Oh, okay. Nice. Um, and other than that, I'm just going to look at the regal and wish that it was time to get it out. Yep. We're close. We're close. <laughs> Getting close. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We'll catch you next week. ZGP Power Hour. If anyone has any suggestions on what we should ramble about yeah. for an hour, Please. send them over. Send them we over. love those. We'll, we'll probably title it the episode that and then not talk about and it. And then yeah. we'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah. So on that bombshell, we'll catch you next week. Better Peace.